I wanna show you a super quick method to create a merchant fulfilled listing from an existing FBA listing in just under seven minutes. Hi, I'm Sean Farrington and since 2015, I've been helping brands unlock the power of Amazon while avoiding those nasty Amazon nightmares that you've probably heard so much about. I know because I have the battle scars and the bruising from years of dealing with all of that Amazon craziness. But those scars are why I can confidently say that setting up an FBM listing is so critical that the Amazon account management agency that I run, we always set up that FBM listing just as soon as clients put their brand into our system. Why? Because this move takes a ton of power away from Amazon and gives our clients maximum flexibility and control over inventory, visibility, storage limits, ranking, and so much more. Now, just to clarify, we're going to be creating an FBM listing for a product that we already have an FBA listing for, meaning there are gonna be two listings selling the same product. So the existing listing will be our current FBA listing, which stands for Fulfillment by Amazon, meaning that Amazon handles the logistics of sending your individual orders on your behalf. This new Fulfillment by Merchant listings, FBM, means that you are going to be responsible for shipping out each individual order. It sounds complicated, but it only takes a few minutes to set up your new FBM listing, and I'm gonna show you the fastest way to do it right. We're gonna go to the computer, and if you stay to the end, I'll even give you a special bonus to help you even more. Start that timer, here we go. All right, step one, in Seller Central. First, we're gonna go to our Seller Central account and find the Manage Inventory. Step two, in Seller Central, we're gonna open two tabs by either command or control clicking the Amazon logo like this. Then step three, we're gonna copy the ASIN. We're gonna copy the ASIN of the product that you need to create the FBM listing for. We're copying because we're gonna need this in just a second in step four, in which we're going to add a product. Now, in the second tab, go to inventory and then click add a product. Now, step five, we're going to search for that product. Scroll down to the section that says, find your products in Amazon's catalog. And just paste the ASIN that we already swooped up just a second ago, and then click search. If you're creating this FBM listing from another existing product, you would just go search for it right here. Then your screen should now display the product we need to create the FBM listing for. Step six, selling condition. Now, we're gonna click on the selling condition, in this case, new, because it's a new product that we are selling. Then step seven, click sell this product. This should take you to an edit page showing you the product and the offer you're making for this product. Now note, a notice may pop up stating that this product already exists in your inventory. It's gonna ask you to consider editing the existing listing rather than creating a new listing. Simply close this notification because we don't want to edit an existing listing. We want to create the new FBM listing that we're working on. Step eight, a new SKU. Now to keep this next step as simple as possible, we're going to just copy and paste information from your current FBA listing onto the corresponding fields in the new FBM listing that we're working on as needed. Like this, starting with the seller SKU. So we need a new seller SKU that's different from the current SKU. To find this seller SKU, go back to the first time that we open and click on the edit button in the existing FBA listing. It will open an edit window like this in the existing listing. The idea here is to copy each detail from the offer information in the existing FBA listing without making any any changes to the offer section of the existing FBA listing. You will then paste that information into the offer section of the new FBM listing that we're in the process of creating. So two tabs, two versions of the exact same listing. Keep them in order just like this and then copy and paste from one to the other. Now here we copy that seller SKU. That's what we're working on, the seller SKU. And then paste it into the offer info on the new FBM listing that we're creating like this. Then we just add the letters FBM to the end of the SKU. Adding the FBM like this to the end of the SKU will help us to quickly recognize that this is the fulfilled by merchant version of this listing when it goes live. Now there's one critical button to click and that's the like button if this has been helpful to you so far. If it has, click that like button. While we go to step number nine, where we're going to fill in the critical fields. Next, we'll continue back and forth like this, copying and pasting between these two tabs, all the critical information such as price and any other required information. That takes us to step 10, setting quantity. 
At the top of your edit screen, you'll toggle the more attributes section, which will open up more attributes for you to enter, some of which we'll need in just a moment. Now, when it comes to the quantity field, this is asking you how many of this particular product we are selling, meaning how many units of this product will customers see when they purchase one, they put one into the cart, they open the box, and how many units will they see in the box? So if you're only selling one, then you'll put one. This is always true, except when you're selling like a value pack of three or 10 of the exact same product. If this is not a value pack, a multiple of the exact same product, but rather one single product, then simply enter the number one. Step 11, the max order quantity. Setting the max order quantity provides you two levels of security. By setting the max order quantity to a low number, you effectively stop unscrupulous competitors from buying all of your inventory, opening the boxes, and then returning your products as unsellable. This is the first level of security. The second level of security prevents competitors from doing the old 999 trick where they can simply type in 999 units of the product that they want to buy and then put that into the cart. And then when they go to the cart, it tells you the exact number that's available and you, if it's less than 999 units, which essentially reveals to your competitors exactly how much inventory you have in stock. Now, this is an old school trick that competitors can use daily to go back and track how many units you sell through in a single day. So I recommend setting your max order quantity low, to, but to the highest amount that a true shopper would reasonably purchase at one single time. For most products, I set this to 10. All right, step number 12, handling time. Now, let's set your handling time. If you have possession of your inventory right now and can have it on the doorstep of someone who purchases the product within two days, then you set your handling time to two. If you won't have your inventory in your hands for like say a few weeks, figure out a reasonable delivery time when you could get it to them. Say 10 days, 15 days, or 24 days. You just enter that number into this field. Anything under 30 days will work. Now, a quick note, if you're setting the delivery time for anything over 30 days, it will cause an error and you'll have to come back and select a time equal to 30 days or less. Once you have your handling time set, then we go to step 13, select your fulfillment channel. Now scroll down to the section labeled fulfillment channel, and we will select the button that says, I will ship this item myself. Now this selection is the whole reason we began this process in the first place, which was to set up an FBM listing, meaning I will ship this myself. So make sure that is clicked. Then we're at the final step where it says save and finish now. Yeah. Now we're not quite done yet, but how long did that take? That was pretty quick, right? All right, so now we've done all we can do to set the listing. We're just gonna simply refresh the page. And if your listing is set up correctly, eventually it will show up first with this status, which is incomplete. And then a refresher two later, it will switch to active or inactive out of stock. Well, at this point, uh, you simply enter how much inventory you want to make available for sellers to purchase. Do this by sliding over to the available column and enter the inventory available. Slide over and click save and your listing is live and available to make sales. Now, as a special bonus, I want to give you the checklist to make sure you set up your listing right and don't skip anything. You can print it out at any time, keep it right next to your computer. And one of the biggest issues that I see for new listings is really not knowing how to accelerate success on Amazon. That's why I created this special playlist right here to show you how to really explode your Amazon sales. Click the button right there and then check out the first video in that playlist and I'll show you exactly what to do on that video.